Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. And today I want to talk about a product that I've already reviewed earlier uh, last month. And I'd like to come back to products, usually about 30 days after I have them, and kind of give it, you know, my initial unboxing, my initial review or install, and then come back and kind of tell you guys, you know, if, is it something that I feel uh, I should have purchased or not have purchased, and whether I'm happy with it or whether, in some cases, I've returned it or not. And the product I want to talk about today, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, the Honeywell Lyric T5 Smart Thermostat. Now, I've often said over the years, why do you need a smart thermostat? And, you know, after having one, I'm pretty glad that I went ahead and got one. Now, the only thing is I just want to say, um, now, a lot of times with these kind of energy savings devices, they will run rebates. So when I initially reviewed this device, I said, hey, I wasn't in the market to buy one at the time because I didn't want to spend $180. And, you know, I went ahead and looked on, uh, on you know, on I believe it was one of the websites, and there was, I found a, uh, a for my local power company, a $75 rebate. And they always run rebates with power companies. There's all kinds of stuff you can look. So I, I urge you to, uh, before you make any purchase that has to do with uh, conserving energy, definitely check out those websites to see if there's any kind of rebates. So anyway, I saw that they were having a $75 rebate on any smart thermostat. Not any, but three or four different uh, types. There was the Nest, the Honeywell, a couple of different Honeywells, and I believe the Echo Bay, if I'm saying that right. And so I was like, well, you know, maybe it's something I can go ahead and get now because it's, I mean, for $75 off, that's a great deal. Then I found this device at Home Depot where they had all that advertised, $75 rebate uh, for this particular one, and, home, and Best Buy had it on special for $129. Well, Home Depot went ahead and matched that price. So I said, this is great. I'm going to get this device for, you know, roughly like 50, 60 bucks. And this is awesome. This is well worth the money. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and get it. So I went ahead and got it. And unfortunately, what had happened was, buyer beware, always check the, the fine print on any kind of rebate. Because what they did is that I have forced air, natural gas, and this was a uh, rebate specifically through uh, my power company. And I didn't read any fine print about the rebate until after it was denied. And then they told me why. And that's because naturally, if my house was uh, heated by power, it, I would have been able to get the rebate, but because it doesn't matter that I use lots of power with everything else, uh, because this didn't relate to that, uh, I wasn't able to get the rebate. So buyer beware. But either way, with that being said, I was pretty kind of annoyed about it. Um, you know, I was thinking, gosh, maybe I should have returned it. But you know, now that I have it and it's installed, I'm pretty happy with it. And this is the reason why I'm pretty happy with it. What's great about this particular device, if you're going to get one of the, uh, this particular thermostat and just install it and call it a day. I don't really recommend it because really for what this device does, if you're not going to use the app to actually control your temperature remotely or uh, integrate it into your smart your smart home hub or your other smart uh, devices or take advantage of one of the features it has, which I'll tell you about in a second, or use voice control, it's not really something that you're, you're, you're going to use. If you're going to put this on the wall and call it a day, you could just go ahead and get by with a standard programmable thermostat like I've had in the past for the last 10 years that you program in uh, the times of day you want it to turn on and turn off the temperature, uh, when you work, when you leave. And, you know, that saved me quite a bit of money over the years. Now, I don't think they, – they say that these smart thermostats will save you money. And I don't buy that. The only way I buy that is if you're the type of person that has your thermostat set at, let's say, 68 degrees all day long or 70 degrees all day long. If you're not cycling your thermostat to come on or off – then naturally you're, you're, you're wasting money. And if you go ahead and get one of these smart thermostats that actually learn when you're coming and going, that will save you money. Now this is not one of those thermostats. The Nest is one of those thermostats that actually if you're going to install that thing and you're the type of person that goes over that and says, oh man, I got home. If that uh, thermostat detects it every day you get home at noon and you're turning up the temperature and then you're every day you're leaving at a certain time and turning down temperature, it's going to start to learn those patterns and it's going to start to just automatically do that for you. So if you're the type of person who actually manually um, turns your thermostat up and down quite a bit, that's a great option for you. For me, I don't do that. I've always just programmed in when I, for 16 hours a day, I'm either at work or I'm sleeping. So when I'm in bed and I'm all toasty and I got my electric blanket on and or my electric heating pad, the temperature needs to come down. And being in my bedroom upstairs, all that heat just continues to rise. So there's no point keeping my thermostat on at 68 degrees at night. So what I do is I set my thermostat for 68 when I'm home or moving around or up and about and 58 degrees when I'm gone or if I'm sleeping. And that's worked very well for me over the years. Now. This device actually, what I like about this device, and this is the reason why, if this was the thermostat that I just put on the wall, this particular one, and just went over to it, turned it up and down, 
I would be kind of disappointed because it doesn't do any kind of learning, okay? But for me, what I do is I use the, the um, Echo Dot and the Google for voice command to control this. And so if that's something that you're interested in doing, this is a great buy for you because it's one of the more affordable thermostats and it's by a well-known company. Honeywell has been in the business for, in, for heating systems for years, a lot longer than anybody else. And, you know, I think they make a decent product. I mean, I, I, they've been making thermostats forever. So I think that the product will hold up and I think it's going to last, uh, you know, the test of time. Um, the other features that it has, naturally, that I use, okay, is one of which um, is what I like to do is you know, not only use the voice control, but what I like to do is when I'm getting off work and I know I'm going to be coming home, what I do is I'll just turn the thermostat up, knowing that by the time I get home, the house will be warmer. Now, this device does have something called geofencing, and you can actually schedule times if you want to. And I haven't really decided which way I'm going to go with that yet. Um, right now, I have it set where I have the geofence turned off, and I forgot to set the thermostat uh, for you know when I leave and stuff, uh, stuff like that. What, what this device does, what geofencing is, is that it allows you to set a radius around your house. Now, it's not super pinpoint accurate. You can't get in super close. You can get, I'd say, probably about a half a mile away. And for me, the only downside to that is my parents live about a block away. So if I leave the house and I'm going to go hang out with them during the day and be up at their house for, you know, six, seven hours, it's going to think that I'm already home. But when I go to work and I pass that geofence, that threshold, my, well, excuse me, when my cell phone passes that threshold, it'll say, okay, well, he's not home. It'll turn down the temperature to the away mode at 58 degrees. The only problem with that, with my particular situation, is... For some reason or another, my phone, uh, maybe I need to wipe it clean or whatever, but whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to, to do that automatically. I don't know if it's because the app keeps crashing or the app's not staying uh, awake in the background. It worked for a while and then it stopped working. And what happens is even when I cross that geofence, by the time I get inside the house and I'm connected to the network, I look at the temperature and it's still set at 58 degrees until I open the app. As soon as I do that, it pops on. So that's something I just have to troubleshoot. Um, the other issue with that, too, is that let's say you're the type of person like, like me who has several different devices. Like I have an in-wall iPad that you can get that app on. I have um, uh, two phones I carry. One that was an old phone I just used for Wi-Fi-based stuff uh, for recording videos. And the other one I use as my primary phone. Well, if you have this app on both devices and you leave one at home, it's going to think you're home if you're using the geofence. So really, the geofence is really set up for, I would say, one device. And let's say you have multiple people in your household, then you can have it on multiple devices. Whereas, like, if they're coming and going at different times, once it detects that nobody's within the geofence, it'll turn the temperature down. But let's just say, like, you have a stay-at-home wife or whatever your situation is, and they have that app on there, it's always going to be at the, the, the comfortable temperature, which I guess is good. But if that phone or device is never leaving the house, like if it's a tablet you leave home... Uh, it's it's pointless to put on. It really needs to be a device that people are going to be taking uh, with them and bring it back into the geofence. So that's why, uh, for me, I had to remove it from my other phone. And I removed it from my iPad as well because it's always got to think I'm home when I'm not. So that's the only downside to the geofence. Um, but it is a pretty cool feature, and I think it will work out for some folks. And it did work out for me, but, you know, it's easy enough for me to, when I'm coming home, just simply pull out my phone and turn up the temperature. So... I do like the feature, but I really enjoy the voice control and the fact that I can control it remotely. Now, the only downside with this thermostat, I would say, uh, the only thing I really, one of the things I don't like about it is the fact that I don't like the way it particularly looks. Now, as far as the cosmetics of the device, it's pretty straightforward. It's not bad looking, but it's really nothing to write home about. And what I, and what I mean is I don't necessarily dislike how it looks. I dislike the features on when you actually activate it. Um, it would be nice if this thing kind of um, uh, went to this setting where you can turn it up and down upon motion, which it does, not you actually have to touch it. And then it's very basic. You have your Wi-Fi signal, a time, uh, your temperature, your set temperature, and your up and down buttons, and then you can set the clock and fan or whatever like that. So not really too much to it. Uh, so that's the only thing. You know, when it comes to things that are kind of techy and cool, you kind of want them to look good. So hindsight, maybe I would have got something different, but... One thing I do like is the fact that with the iPad that I mounted in the wall, right next to it with the iWall dock, uh, which I want to thank them again for their generosity in sending me that product, uh, which allows you to mount the tablet in the wall. It's a great, it works for me as a weather station, as a media center where I can cast music to different devices. And I have a Bluetooth speaker hooked up to that that's kind of tucked away underneath the fireplace here. This one, I turn on some quick sound, I can. And it's all controlled right there. 
Um, we all like Cool Factor too, and the nice thing about it too is I can turn it on to a spectrum analyzer, where it's a little cranking up music and have the LifeX bulbs flashing like a concert, listen to some cranked up tunes. It'll actually have a spectrum analyzer on there that's listening to the music and showing you like a graphic equalizer or spectrum analyzer. So that looks really cool. And what I like about it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the thermostat because it kind of matches the black border. And what I really like, what I always usually leave on is the weather channel. So I just leave this on, it shows the temperature outside. Uh, for my location and any kind of alerts, you know, I have a couple different weather uh, things on there. So I think it complements the thermostat really well. You can see my local temperature is 42 right now. So um, otherwise, um, you know, with the negative things about the display on the thermostat being very, very basic, and uh, you know, they make other ones that have a much more graphics intense. You know, we have like different wallpapers and they're a little bit larger, uh, but you gotta pay more for them. And for the price point. I'm pretty happy with it, but looking back, if I was spending $126 and not knowing I wasn't going to get that 75 dollars rebate, I probably would have went ahead and maybe spent a little more and maybe got one that was a little bit more, um, a little prettier, you know what I'm saying? But for the price, I am very happy with it. And the nice thing about the Honeywell, and I'm not sure about some of the other ones out there, I'm sure Nest and EcoBee are all very compatible with the smart home stuff. Uh, but one thing I do like about it is that it is compatible with IFTT, which is if this, then that. And what happens is you can program different devices that maybe aren't normally meant to communicate with one another. It'll allow you to communicate with those devices. So for instance, I have a FUBOT, and I want to thank FUBOT again for sending me that awesome environment monitor for my bedroom. Um, it has temperature, uh, uh, it, has, it reads the temperature, your humidity, uh, it reads uh, your volatile compounds, your particulate matter, your carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. And you can all access that from the app. So I can come over here, pull up their app, and see all that information. Um, the also, other nice thing is it gives you alerts and you can set thresholds. So for instance, with all these connected devices, and being that the Honeywell is compatible with that, let's say that there is a, and for me it doesn't really make much of a difference because uh, my house is pretty regulated as far as the way that I have the vents open and closed. So when my downstairs is say set to 70, my upstairs is usually set about 71. So there's not much of a difference there. It kind of maintains its temperature throughout the house pretty well. But let's say you had a situation where your, let's say your bedroom was just, it's colder than other rooms in the house and it takes a little more heat in the house to warm that room. Well, being that there's a temperature monitor with that FUBOT in my bedroom, I have, I can actually set that to say, okay, if the temperature within the house, maybe it's set 70 here, if the temperature in that bedroom falls, maybe for whatever reason, to 65 degrees, or whatever I want to set it to, it'll communicate with IFTT and trigger the thermostat to go up to where I want to set it. Now I do have that set, and there's other things you can do with that as well. I do have that set to, uh, for instance, if the temperature in the bedroom gets to 77 degrees during the summer, it'll kick the ceiling fan on just to circulate the air. So there's lots of different things you can do with these devices that all kind of work together. Uh, so that's, again, one thing I do like about the Honeywell, it does work with smart things. As far as hookup, it was really easy to hook up. As far as having to run that extra uh, line, which I explained in my initial review of this, um, I was used to having just your standard basic thermostat three wire, uh, that basically was a battery operated thermostat, so it didn't need a constant power supply. And my wires, and your wires may be different, had two extra unused wires, and all I did was basically climb up into the attic, go into the thermos, open uh, the thermos, the, the furnace, <laughs> thermos, right? Uh, open up the furnace and basically connect, uh, just I used a, an existing blue wire that wasn't being used, connected to the constant, then use that for the constant here, where this is always powered up when there's power to the house, of course. Um, so that's really about it. I mean, uh, other than trying to troubleshoot that, uh, and if you have any questions about install, I'm not an electrician, so you, you take all this into your own hands when you do this. Uh, just word to the wise, you don't feel comfortable. Uh, I'm not an expert, so but if you have any questions, I'm more than help, uh, willing to help you. But overall, I am very happy with the thermostat. I love the fact that I can be sitting down and voice control it from anywhere in the home because I have the different echoes in Google Homes throughout the home. It works with both those voice uh, devices. And um, you know, like I said, although I wish it you know, had uh, some sort of motion sensing when you walk up to it, it would kick on, maybe it would be nicer if you had Maybe you could change the colors of the LEDs or the LCD. But nonetheless, it's basic, it's functional, and it was one of the more affordable, well-known brands. You can get a lot of brands on eBay that are like from China and different brands, but you know, I just wanted to go with something that I knew was a trusted name, which Honeywell is, and something that was just going to work with my voice, uh, my voice devices and some of the other stuff in the house. So overall, I'm extremely happy with the Honeywell Lyric T5. 
Uh, again, I wish I would have got that $75 off, but that was really my fault. Uh, I should have just read the fine print or looked into it. Buyer beware, do your research, and uh, you know, uh, don't do what I did. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's lots of different thermostats out there. A lot of them do the same thing. And I would urge to you that if you're not the type of person, like the Nest thermostat looks pretty cool. You have a big, giant, round, white, you know, uh, thermostat really it makes it look like the old school basic ones and you have you know some uh, kind of a really nice display of the temperature their display is very basic as well uh, but if you're not going to be actually turning that temperature up and down um, often you know if you're not the type of person who is going to uh, consistently uh, you know change the temperature with and, and let it learn a behavior then it's kind of a waste of money getting that, and you're better off just getting something like this. If you just want to have voice control and app control and a little bit of integration with some of the other smart home items in your house, then, um, then man, this is, a, this is a great purchase, and you, you really can't go wrong with the price. I think it is the most affordable Wi-Fi-based smart thermostat by a reputable name uh, that you're going to find a lot of your big box stores and, of course, on eBay. You're, probably, you're always going to save money by going with some of the links that I put underneath the videos. So check those out if you're interested. And uh, that's about it, guys. Again... Not to beat a dead horse, but I'm really happy with the purchase. I'm glad I got it, and it's made my life definitely more comfortable and a little bit easier and definitely a little cooler. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment. As always, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, do remember to subscribe to the channel uh, if, if you do like the content, of course. You know what? If you don't like the content, subscribe to the channel just so you can tell me you don't like the content anytime I upload a new video. Also remember to click that little bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video. Stay tuned for a lot more smart home devices. Lots more watches to be reviewed, and wait till this summer where we start doing the smart backyard. Uh, once again, if you uh, do watch my videos often and you haven't checked out my updated smart home office, go ahead and check that out now. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Have a great day.